Hello, my name is Paul Anderson Walsh. I'm the director of The Grace Project based in London. I'm so pleased that you could join me for this little broadcast. Um, I wanted to do a little broadcast to just basically explain what we call the second mile. A number of people have been emailing me saying, what's this work you're involved in in London called the second mile? What's it all about? Well, 2009 proved to us to be a year of real transition. After 10 years, we finally decided that we'd taken our Sunday meetings as far as we could possibly take them and felt very much that the Lord was transitioning us and moving us into a very new direction, or certainly new for us. And that new direction was to come away from the congregational setting where uh, even though we hadn't invited this or wanted this, in fact we positively discouraged it, we were in a relationship very much as the kind of pastors to a group of people that were a congregation and we wanted to move back into the role that we feel much more uncomfortable in, intuitively much more comfortable, which is that between the relationship between a teacher and students. I guess the difference for me psychologically feels that when a group of students come into the classroom they come to learn something to get something to go and be something with it, whereas I have sensed in my case at least that when people were coming in to be part of our congregation that they'd arrived at the very something they were trying to be. Anyway, be that as it may, we'd certainly been struggling with the whole question of the wine and the wine skin. We felt perhaps the wine was getting uh, better to the taste, uh, a long way from being what we want it to be, a long way from being its full-bodied maturity, but nonetheless moving along well. But yet the wine skin seemed to be almost uh, constricting the ability of the wine to expand. Um, and the truth of the matter was we realized that you cannot put new wine into an old wine skin because if you do, you burst them both. And no matter which way we cut it, it, we were realizing that the wineskin we had was based on an old wineskin and we needed to change it. Well, I found some seeds of comfort in this little verse from Matthew chapter 5, and the 41st verse simply says this, if someone forces you or if someone compels you to go one mile, go two miles. <laughs> you think, well, why is that interesting? That sounds a little bit religious. Well, maybe it does to you, but you know, uh, grace is not based on a formula. But here in this little statement was, for me, the seeds of what is the real key to opening the mystery of the kingdom of God up. Um, there is a dilemma that we've seen in the grace communities over the years, not entirely so, but certainly all too often it's been the case that people come presenting a condition that we call legalism. They've been frankly beaten up in the institutional church, they're exhausted, they come and they're absolutely just wiped out. And we introduce them to this message of grace, if you will, we, we kind of uh, give them a, a vaccination, if you like, and we give them this vaccine, and this vaccine called grace is a wonderful thing but what we didn't realize that we'd had a side effect and one of the side effects seems to be that it oftentimes inoculates you against the full-blown disease that we call Christianity what life in Christ is really all about and that was something we wanted to try and really address we were saying and people was had been saying to us and um, time and time again why does grace seem to produce passivity and I've gone into the scriptures to look for this myself and I couldn't see any evidence of saying that grace was producing passivity on, on the contrary grace seems to be produce uh, this amazing awe it doesn't prevent people from worship it causes people to worship it doesn't stop people from working it actually becomes the very motivation why they do it um, and I couldn't understand what was happening but anyway happening it was uh, and here in this little verse I saw the beginning of some hope I suppose you see religion is always based on requirement on the kind of aggressive negative side there's a requirement there's a you know you'll be damned if you don't on the positive side there's a you'll be blessed if you do but one way or another it's always based on gain or pain uh, if you like, it's this sense, there's always this very definite sense in the air, it's what I call the whiffum factor, the what's in it for me factor. But the truth is that one way or another, religion is based on a reward system. And the moment you take away the reward, you seem to be, uh, you seem to strip away the motivation of anybody to actually live a functional life in Christ. But you see, the problem is, is that religion is incapable of reaching any higher than a life of compulsion or a life of inducement. What's done is done because it's expected. What gets done gets done because it's really demanded. What gets done gets done because it's a social norm. It's, a, it's an ought to do. It's a you should do. It's a duty if you like, but never a delight. 
And what happens is that the law and rule-based life that we came from in the church really enables us to go the 2,000 steps that are the one mile and no further. That's why we ask questions like, and we see them all over the New Testament, questions from the mouth of the rich young ruler. What must I do? Give me the formula. Tell me how much. Or the, the, the disciples, when they say, how many times do we have to give, forgive? Just tell us how many paces we've got to walk before we actually get the thing we're walking for, and then we'll know it's enough. You see, religion and religious people are relatively good. But life in the spirit isn't about relative good. It's about intrinsic good. It's about a good that comes out of who you are. It's an, the, the, the difference between outward and inward. The difference between being and doing. And grace and the life of grace that we're, we're, we're reaching out for belongs on the second mile. Uh, it's the, the business end of grace. Uh, my friend Steve McVeigh often says that I, what I do, he says, he says, Paul Anderson, what's what you do? He said, you seem to me to be what, someone who's teaching the, the grace end of business to the corporate world and the business end of grace to the church world. And I, I'll take that as a great compliment. And I hope that I am. But what I'm wanting to say to those of us who, are, who have moved on from the child message of, of who we are in Christ, who've moved on from the message of justification by faith, who've moved on from asking questions about who they are in Christ, Christ to begin to ask the profound question which is why is Christ in us and Christ is in us in order to live his life through us and as us that's the whole point if you were like me and you came out of the world of, of Pentecostalism or the charismatic expression of faith you would have heard a million times about a life about demonic possession and about how demons are spirits and they need to have bodies in order to manifest their nature well of course God is spirit and his nature is love and he needs a body in order to manifest his nature and his nature is love his nature is otherism the question that is on his mind is what's in him for your benefit the driving question for him is what can I do to bless you and that becomes the question of the second mile and when you begin to see what it means to live on the second mile what you see is that you begin to do things not because you have to but because you want to because it's who you are and what we're interested in exploring together on these Friday nights now we've kind of stripped away the very few layers that we had before is being able to look in to see what we can become both individually and, and corporately and to begin to see what our shared life in Christ might look like so Friday evenings we gather together in central London and we spend a few hours together in, in groups around the scripture and we're at the moment working our way through the Gospel of John and we're looking at something very interesting, this whole idea of coming and seeing. And what I feel the real key to moving into this life in kingdom life is about is moving from being a seater, someone who just sees a set of circumstances, to being a see-througher. And there's a lot of stuff coming out of that which uh, I'm going to try and find ways to package and get to you if you're interested in following us along and maybe these little bite sides sort of eight to ten minute chunks but the second mile suffice it to say this religion starts at the first mile and ends at the two thousandth step grace begins in step 2001 maybe for you grace will begin in step a year 2010 join us on the second mile it's a lot of fun god bless you